It's rainy, it's windy, but no matter, it is still a beautiful day for NAIA football here at Bruce R. Deaton Memorial Field in the southwest corner of Chicago, Illinois. Good afternoon, everyone. Ron Luce on the call with you today, and it's an MSFA Midwest matchup between the Cougars of St. Xavier University and the Fighting Bees of St. Ambrose University. Cougars enter play today on quite the win streak. After a 0-2 start for the Cougars, they have run the table ever since. Looking to continue those ways today and what will be likely a challenging day, both on special teams as well as through the air. However, the Cougars got massive reinforcements last week via the return of running back Amari Venerable. Number 23, the junior back, 1,000-yard rusher from a year ago. Nine carries only, but 77 yards and a touchdown in the monstrous win over the Judson Eagles a week ago today. They'll look to continue those ways on the ground with he, freshman Mario Price, and fellow running back Matthew Chavers. As for the defense, they'll look to continue their dominant stint as well. The Cougars defense been a staple for this group all year long and really the lifeblood so far of this Cougars football team. As for the Fighting Bees, they come into this one two and six on the season, but two and three in conference play under first year head coach Vince Phillip. However, despite a first year at the helm for Phillip, a familiar face in the SAU program, 13 combined years as a Fighting B, four of those as a player, the rest of those on various positions within the coaching staff, and now he gets the chance to run the program himself after being named head coach earlier this year. Coin toss is completed. For those of you on the broadcast at home looking for the clock, check the bottom left-hand corner of our broadcast today. You'll be able to see that there. Down and distance will be at the top as well as the score. Cougars will receive the kick first. This will be Brant Hickson and Justin Pringle back to return for the Cougars. Quite the day for football. We've got severe thunderstorm warnings north of us on the north end of Cook County. Crazy winds have been whipping and howling all afternoon and morning. But everybody in attendance today geared up for what should be a hard-fought and electric MSFA Midwest matchup, as always, between these two clubs. Already issues with the wind here as the kicker gets things set for St. Ambrose. This is number 58, Joe Namio. He'll do the honors and get us started here in just a moment. And another folly of the football falling off the tee. We mentioned the wind. Luckily for us here in the press box, we can't feel it too much, but down on the field, it's going to play a factor today. Wind's absolutely howling as we look at the flags off to the south end of the end zone. So holder in place. Here we go. We're underway. As soon as this kick leaves Namio's foot. MSFA Midwest football is underway here at Bruce Ardeet Memorial Field. Pringle will field and take it across the 15 to the 20. To the 25, he's got green in front of him. Brant Hickson out in front as a lead blocker. Crosses the 50 and almost to the 45-yard line of SAU is returner, senior receiver number six, Justin Pringle. Excellent start for the Cougars on special teams. Brant Hickson leading the way for Pringle all the way across the 50-yard line. And Pringle, the lead receiver on this ball club. 52 catches as a team best, as well as his 630 yards. Cougars will go two to either side. Four wide with Price in the backfield. It'll be junior quarterback Stuart Ross in the gun. That's Gray in motion. And they'll throw it out to Gray on the swing pass, and he is gobbled up. Immediately, that is number 25, outside linebacker Major Haas. 
Excellent play on first down for the Fighting Bees defensively. And that will back the Cougars up. Big loss on first down. It'll be second and about 15 now. Here's Ross once again in the gun. Trips to the near side. Hicks into motion. There's the snap. Price takes the handoff. He's got some speed and nearly gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Gain of about four on second down. Mario Price, a converted wide receiver for this Cougars ball club, but due to a number of injuries early in training camp, forced him into action as a running back for the freshman. He's done an admirable job handling those duties over 500 yards rushing on the season, as well as 200 plus yards in the passing game for the freshman Price, and he'll be split out wide. Empty backfield for Ross, three to the far side, third and 11. There's the snap. Quick throw to Gray on the near sideline. He's got blockers in front of him. He'll lower his shoulder and go forward, but as he crosses the 40-yard line, he'll turn up just shy of a first down. This will be fourth and one for the Cougars. And it looks like the offensive staff and head coach Mike Feminist want to go for it here on fourth and a yard. Almost same personnel on the field, two receivers to either side. Ross with a check with me look. Looking back to the sideline here for a new call. Price will change sides in the backfield. 13 minutes to play in the first quarter. Price in motion. There's the snap. Ross all over the middle to Hickson, and he's got it for a fresh set of downs. Nice job by the Cougars offense operating out of that first down loss. That'll bring up first and 10 now. Ball will be on the 24-yard line, so knocking on the door of the red zone are the Cougars. And it looks like the Cougars will slow things down a bit offensively. Look to chew up some of this clock as we continue to wind beyond 12 and a half to play. Motion for Pringle. And there's the handoff to Price. He'll run to the far sideline. Turn up field. He's got a first down, but a yellow hanky is out on the field. This will likely be a holding call against the Cougars. We'll get the official ruling here from our officiating crew in just a moment. Graduate student and left tackle Mitch Scherer, the guilty party for the Cougars. That'll back him up from the spot, 10 yards. So this will be first and a mile. First and 20 is going to be the indication, that holding call right at the original line of scrimmage. 12.09 to play with the stoppage. and. Here's Ross, there's the snap, feeling the pressure, he'll move around in the pocket to escape it. Runs to the sideline and gains maybe a yard, good smart play for the junior quarterback, Ross. Not trying to force anything downfield today. This will bring up second and maybe 19. And junior... Continuing to slow things down are the Cougars. We have yet to see Amari Venerable here for the Cougars today, as we mentioned last week. Nine carries, 77 yards, coming back from a fairly significant injury. Cougars often certainly happy to have him back. Here's Hickson in motion, and they'll give to Price up the middle. Price has daylight in front of him, makes a cut. He's off to the 10, the 5, and he's tackled just before he can get to the end zone. It's the freshman Mario Price with a beautiful pickup, and that will be a fresh set of downs for the Cougars. First and goal upcoming here for SXU. The Cougars have done a nice job up the gut today overall. Price has had plenty of room to run. There's the snap, Ross out to Pringle. Pringle's gonna turn the corner, and he is in! Touchdown, Cougars! Justin Pringle, the quick throw to the outside and let your playmakers do the rest. 
Justin Pringle gets in the end zone. That is six for St. Xavier. PAT from Peyton Bennis upcoming. Excellent drive put together by the Cougars, and really it's been all on the ground. Price had a nice run there. Nearly had two, if not negated, for the holding. That will lead to Bennis's PAT here after Pringle punches in another touchdown. Snap is good, kick is up, and that is also good. 7-0 Cougars, they'll take the lead on their first drive. That'll bring out the special teams unit here in just a moment. 10.58 to play here in the first quarter. Still tons of football left, but here the SXU sideline have to be encouraged with that first drive. Obviously, special teams helping you to start the great kick return by Justin Pringle. And naturally, he caps it off for the Cougars touchdown. We highlighted first-year head coach Vince Phillip in the opening monologue, and we'll highlight the Cougars head coach, Mike Feminist, in his 24th season at the helm here. Took over this Cougars program back in 1999 after serving as the defensive coordinator for MSFA Midwest rival University of St. Francis down in Joliet. And this season we saw him collect his first. Major milestone of this current campaign and that was his 200th career win back on homecoming. Looking for number 205 now today. Here's Bennis getting ready to kick off and a nice kick at that, but the wind absolutely kills it. It'll be fielded at about the 25 to the 30, 35, and about the 40-yard line. It looks like Ryan Fitzgerald, the first Cougar in the pile as they force the kick returner. That's number 83, Nolan Bielskis. Send him out of play there, and good starting field position now for the Fighting Bees. And as we noted, the Cougars' defense, led by number 22 in the middle, Joey Markasovic, a team leading 75 tackles. He's got a couple of picks this year, a pick six at that as well. Has been an absolute menace in the middle. The third Markasovic brother to play in this Cougars program. Here's motion from the Bees. Casey will deliver a strike to the sideline. And that's his lead receiver, number one, Yemi Ward, diving forward for a couple of yards. They'll bring up second and about seven now for SAU. They'll work quickly out of their shotgun look. Tight look here as well from the receivers on second and seven. There's the snap. Casey on the option. He'll fling it out to his running back. And a good play made there by number four, Peyton Nigro. To Knowledge Hall, unable to go anywhere after the pitch from junior quarterback Tom Casey. And that's a big play on second down for this Cougars defense. Third and 10 now after the three yard loss. Trips to the near side for the Bees. They'll move quickly. Casey in the gun. There's the snap. Casey drops back, looks to his left, delivers a strike to the sideline here, but just out of reach of his receiver. That was number 15, Justin Wright, the intended target. And with that, that'll bring up fourth down, and the punting unit for SAU will come onto the field. 9.47 to go here in quarter number one, and the Cougars' defense already with a three and out on their resume for the day. Pringle, the lone man, back to return now for the Cougars. So he'll be punted away from the 40-yard line for St. Ambrose. Keep an eye on the wind here with the long snap. And a good snap at that. He gets it through, and it's sailed away. Pringle will watch it bounce in front of him, and he'll field it on that hop. Here's Pringle as he cuts up field. Tries to make a man miss, but a nice tackle on special teams. That's number 33, the starting strong safety, Jake Strader, with an excellent play on Excellent play there on special teams. That'll back the Cougars up on their own 10-yard line to start. Now first and 10 here upcoming. 9.34 to play in this first quarter. 
naturally, if you're the Cougars offense here, want to keep what you had going as the game plan. They've had a lot of success. SAU running a 40 front today with a 43 kind of overhang look. And there's the handoff to Price. He'll cut it up the hash. He's got Green in front of him. To the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Will he be caught from behind? No, and he leaves a stiff arm. Crosses the 20 inside the 15, down to the 10. Freshman Mario Price with an absolute beauty of a run. That's an 80-yard gain on first down. And the Cougars are already in business. First and goal on the second play of the drive. Again, we talked about it, how good the run game has been up the middle. Counter Trey works against this 43 overhang look. That looked like what it was there for Price. Took it up the hash as you're indicated by your running back coaches. And he ran away from the defense, eventually caught at about the 10 yard line. This will be first and 10 officially from the 11 as we tick under nine to play. Ross, the snap, handoff. This is Chavers, the big man. Rumbling, bumbling, and stumbling forward for a gain of about two. Shavers only, only under 100 yards rushing for the season, but two touchdowns. Those both came in the homecoming win against Roosevelt University. Second and nine officially upcoming. Pardon us. Not goal to go because of the initial spot. So second and nine now from the 10. Ross with the snap, looking to his left. He'll take it up the middle on the run. Tries to make a man miss. He'll get inside the five. And it looks like they'll officially mark him at the five. So this will be third and maybe three, possibly four. And it looks like it will be third and about four for the Cougars here. In the red zone, looking to punch this one in. Ball is spotted on the five-yard line as SXU huddles up. You may notice on the broadcast, the left tackle changing on every drive. Cougars rotate a pair. Jacoby Washington, a freshman now in the game. He and Scherer share time. Here's the handoff to Chavers. Chavers to the left side. And he'll go nowhere, maybe gains a yard that might be generous. And it looks like we might have an injury. Chavers down on the ground in a little bit of pain. Cougars will bring the field goal unit out. It sounds like from the audio we can hear on the near sideline. But with Chavers down, we'll step aside. We'll take a quick breather, don't go anywhere. Fourth down upcoming here for the Cougars in just a moment. Officially be fourth and three. We'll step aside right here on the Cougar Sports Network. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the injury. Welcome back everyone. Matthew Chavers up and walking under his own power. Certainly a great sight to see. Never want to see anybody get injured, especially with the turf being a little slippery today due thanks to that morning rain we had here in the Chicagoland area. There will be a field goal attempt for the Cougars here. Number 38, Peyton Bennis on to try and convert this three point attempt. Relatively a chip shot, but keep in mind the wind here today is whipping astronomically. So this is not a give me by any means. The snap, the hold is good. The kick is up from Bennis, and it is no good. We mentioned that wind is going to be a problem today, and it was there. Still a one-score game from the Fighting Bees' perspective, but they are backed up inside their own 10-yard line to start. 7-14 officially still to play here in quarter number one. If you're joining us late, we indicated the 
Scoreboard down to the left-hand corner of your screen gives you the clock as well. This will be first down, it appears, from the four-yard line. And pardon me, that'll be from the 20-yard line. It functioned as a touchback here because of the missed field goal. So here comes the Cougars defense looking to stand tall once again. Tom Casey will lead the Fighting Bees out onto the field once again offensively. Nick Platner serving as the tight end one here today for the Fighting Bees. Listed on the depth chart as the number two tight end. We've yet to see Israel Taylor much today. Two receivers to the near side of the field for Casey in the gun. There's the snap. Handoff and nowhere is exactly where to knowledge Hall will go on that play. Gain of about a yard on first down. Not much going there. Just a simple handoff, but the Cougars front seven standing tall and limiting the damage on first down. Well, the Cougars shuffling their personnel around a little bit on the field. Same look offensively here on second down for the Fighting Bees. Knowledge on the handoff. And to Knowledge Hall goes nowhere once again. That looked like the exact same play from SAU. Not sure if they were just trying to catch the Cougars sleeping or what, but there is gain of no yards on second down. This will be third. And after they mark it, it's officially 10, so a loss of one yard. Same personnel grouping for the Fighting Bees here on third and 10. There's the snap, Casey looking to his left. Feeling the pressure, he'll avoid it and get out of the pocket. Now throws a little looper down the sideline for Yemi Ward. And Ward will haul it in for the completion. That'll be a first down Fighting Bees. Good effort by the junior quarterback, Casey, to avoid the pressure. Now first and 10 upcoming here from the 37-yard line is the official mark. And now a different look personnel-wise. Tight look, three receivers and a tight end for the Fighting Bees. First and 10. There's Casey. Hand off to Hall and... Hall will lean forward and once again maybe gain a yard but not much going for the Fighting Bees so far in the run game. Second and nine now upcoming here. 5.33 and counting left to go in this first quarter. Cougars still lead by seven. Fighting Bees looking to get some momentum going here on their second offensive possession of the game. Casey with the snap, again another handoff to Hall, and Hall is gobbled up. He'll keep churning his knees forward, and they'll move the pile for a gain of about four. Nice job there by the big running back to Knowledge Hall and his offensive line just leaning into the Cougars' front seven. Picking up an honest gain there on second down. This will bring up third and manageable, third and five officially. It looks like the Fighting Bees will spread things out. Trips to the far side of the field now. Four receivers join Casey and Hall. Quick personnel change for the Cougars on defense in addition. And here we go, third and five from the 42. Casey takes the snap. Quick throw to the sideline. And they'll be incomplete as Ward catches it on a bounce. I'm going to bring up fourth and five now for the Fighting Bees. Neither team wanting to take shots downfield today because of this wind. So certainly keep an eye on that and keep that in the back of your mind when questioning the play calling. That'll bring out the punting unit here for the Fighting Bees. This is number eight, Jackson Hunsicker. We'll do the honors and punt it away. Pringle, the lone returner for the Cougars with 4.33 to play. And a very similar game plan overall for the Fighting Bees. Run the rock, run the rock, run the rock. Short pass and get it to your playmakers on the sideline. Hunsicker gets it away. A nice spiraling kick, but it 
ends up on the sideline. Should be decent starting field position now for the Cougars. Still flips the field respectively. It looks like it'll be officially spotted on the 29-yard line, according to the FAR official. So first and 10 upcoming now for the Cougars. They'll get another crack at it as Stuart Ross and company come back out on the field. So with 4.25 to play, if you're the Cougars, you certainly hate to waste that Mario Price run on the last drive. New running back in the game as well here for the Cougars. This is number 28, Jesse Plunkett. And there's the fake on the handoff to Ross. He's got time in the pocket, feels it collapsing. He'll spin and get out of it. And now just throws it to the sideline in the area of Justin Pringle. Ross took a bit of a hit. And he is down on the ground in a little bit of discomfort. He'll get back to his feet. And it looks like Ross is in a bit of pain after taking a late shot there. No indication from the officials for a flag. So with 4.17 to play, it'll be second and 10. And we'll wait for the indication here. Trainers out on the field to chat with Ross. So Ross comes to the sideline here. So he'll come out of the game for one play. This will be backup quarterback number nine, John O'Sullivan, stepping in for at minimum one play. Per the rules, if you go down with injury, you have to sit out at least a single play unless the team burns a timeout. Cougars don't want to do that here. So second and ten, Brant Hickson in motion. O'Sullivan takes the snap, handoff to Plunkett. Plunkett will plunge forward. And he'll gain about three, maybe four yards, it looks like, there on second down. So this will be a third and six now upcoming for the Cougars. Well, Sullivan remains in the game. And it looks like Ross is back now in the huddle. Good to see him back and healthy. It looks like Price is being attended to here on the near sideline. So Plunkett continues to operate as the lead back for the Cougars. Third and six, there's the snap. Ross drops back, has time, feels the pressure and he'll go down. That's a sack for number five, Drew Ackman. So that'll bring up fourth and 10 after the loss and expect the Cougars to punt here. And no, instead, the offense will remain on the field. Trips look to the near side for Stuart Ross. Two on the far side, empty backfield. There's the snap. Ross gets it outside, and now a flag. That'll blow the play dead with 3.04 to play. Never seen an offensive encroachment, but guilty party will be number five, Mason Gray for the Cougars, so that'll back him up five yards. Fourth and 15 now for the Cougars, and the offense remains on the field. They have no desire to kick in this conditions. Trips to the near side, running back is Plunkett. There's the snap, Ross drops back looking to his left. Now over the middle, wanted Hickson. But that'll fall incomplete. Number 38, John Guck, the freshman cornerback in the vicinity, tried to haul in the interception, but from a field position standpoint, probably the better move to let it fall incomplete. So now first and 10 upcoming from just outside the red zone for St. Ambrose. Incredibly favorable field position now for the Fighting Bees. 2.51 to play here in this first quarter, and the Cougars trusting their defense to stand tall. It'll be the junior quarterback, Casey and company, going to work. Three receivers here to the near side. A stack look all the way here on the outside. 
Number 22, Ray Bouye the third in the backfield now for the Fighting Bees. There's the snap for Casey. Looking to his left, he'll throw downfield. Open receiver in the end zone, and it's caught for the touchdown. Number 88, Ben Gilbert was wide open here on the near pylon. And just like that, SAU strikes back. An extra point pending. This could be a tie ball game with 2.45 to play in the opening frame. Nice job there for the Fighting Bees on first down. Take a shot. You're in striking distance. You have the wind at your back. And they did just that. Ben Gilbert was wide open. Not the biggest receiver ever listed at 5'7", 165. But when you're that open and the safety has to scrape across to try to cover you, it was Jaden Phillips trying to get over there. Unable to do so. And that gives SAU life here in this first quarter. Snap is down, hold, kick is up, and it is good. Namio ties the game at seven. We're all knotted up. Cougars will get the ball back, now trying to build offensively. A rough offensive drive the last time out, resulting in that turnover on downs. And one play, one strike, the 24-yard touchdown pass. KC to Gilbert, and SAU has tied this up here at Bruce R. Deaton Memorial Field. Certainly, if you're SAU, they're great play design. Take a shot. It's first down. You've trusted your run game to this point, and really that's all you've shown the Cougars leading up to that deep pass. Deepest pass downfield was the Yummy Ward pickup earlier on their second drive, and that was only a gain of maybe 12 yards. Doubling that up there on the touchdown pass. 24-yard reception for Gilbert and the touchdown. For Casey, that is his 21st touchdown pass of the season. Doesn't have the yard numbers, under 1,500 total yards coming into today, but 20 touchdown passes to just five interceptions. Very effective and efficient is the junior quarterback for SAU. 2.45 to play. Here comes the kickoff. It's Namio to do the honors. Oh, and it's an onside. Surprise onside kick. And it is recovered by the Fighting Bees. What beautiful execution on special teams. Time and time again, if you ask Coach Feminist, how do you win football games, he'll tell you more often than not it's special teams. And there's still no firm indication of whose possession. It's Cougars ball. Wow. So the Cougars get in the pile and come up with the possession. A nice job by number 33, that's Nico Uriarte, Oakland Community High School product. And that was huge for the Cougars because now that gives them incredible starting field position. First and 10 to start on their own 49-yard line, nearly in SAU territory to start. SAU ex executed that perfectly. The Cougars were not ready. There was nobody in the vicinity of that football did not come away with it. Feels like a uh, uh, just missed opportunity for this Fighting Bees team. Empty backfield for Ross. There's the snap. Gray gets it out here on the near sideline on the screen. He'll bumble forward and picks up a nice respectable gain of about seven, maybe eight on first down. It looks like it will be a gain of seven officially, so this will be second and three upcoming now for the Cougars. Game plan for both sides has been pretty consistent overall. Not a lot of shots downfield for either team. Everything to the sideline, getting your playmakers the football and letting them do the work after the catch. Two receivers to either side here for Ross in the gun. Price has returned in the backfield for the Cougars. And there's the snap. And he'll hand it off to Price. Price looking for room. He'll cut up field. Leans forward. He's right at the sticks. And no official word yet, but it will be a first down now from our near sideline official. So fresh set of downs now for the Cougars. Good running there by Mario Price. That was a stretch look to the outside on the left there. And as a running back, you're taught, set your blocks up for your linemen. Use your eyes to guide the defense. He did that just there. And although only a three-yard pickup, it's still a fresh set of downs for the Cougars. Nice job by Price cutting it back upfield and leaning forward for the first. Empty backfield, three to the near side for Ross. 
There's the snap. Ross looking to his right. He'll deliver to Hickson. Hickson cuts up field. Makes a couple of men miss, and he'll kick, connect for another first down. And that'll be right at the 30-yard line for the Cougars. They're finding a little bit of momentum now here offensively on this drive. Nothing special, but picking up chunk yardage and, again, letting your playmakers do the work after the catch. We're ticking, about to tick under a minute to play here in this first quarter. Cougars slowing things down just a hair. Cougars go back to a four-wide look, two to either side with Ross and Price in the backfield. Motion from Pringle. And they'll send it out to Pringle here. That's a backward pass. Pringle needs to jump on it. He does. So from a possession perspective, that will keep everything going. And Cougars wanting a late flag. Pringle was hit after he was already out of play. No word from the officials. So a tragic loss of yards now for the Cougars on the mishap backward pass. Let's do some math together here, folks. They were on the 30 that backs them up to about the 47 is going to be the official marker. And just like my birthday, ladies and gentlemen, second and 27 coming up here for the Cougars. They'll hand off to Price. He gets a little bit of that back. Big hit delivered by looks like number 33. That's Jake Schrader. And that should end the first quarter. We're knotted up at seven through one here at Bruce R. Deaton Memorial Field. This MSFA Midwest matchup is going to be tightly contested. Don't go anywhere. We're going to step aside just for a quick breather. Be back with you at the start of the second quarter right here on the Cougar Sports Network. Welcome back, everybody. Second quarter action about to get started here from Bruce R. Deaton Memorial Field. The first quarter featured a good quarter at that for Mario Price. 121 yards already on the ground for the freshman running back. He and Jesse Plunkett so far have been sharing responsibility for the Cougars. Checking back in here now on this drive. It's third and 22 for the Cougars. Here's Quinn in motion. They'll throw it out to Gray, and he bobbles it. That falls incomplete. So fourth and 22, and saw the last time the Cougars went for it on fourth and long. It kind of backfired, so it looks like the punting unit will come out now for Coach Feminist and company. 14.57 officially still to play here in this second quarter. Back to return will be number 83. That is Nolan Bielskis. Pringle will serve as the punter. Normal punter Joe Paselli not dressed today with injury. He and Pringle earlier in the season sharing responsibilities as the punter. High snap, Pringle handles it. Nice punt toward the sideline, and that will be a coffin corner punt for Justin Pringle. It'll be ball on the one yard line for the Fighting Bees. He can do it all, ladies and gentlemen. He's a returner, he's a punter, and he's a wide receiver. Should see him in the run game as well. What an excellent punt from number six, Justin Pringle. That is textbook from the receiver. The ball will be on the one yard line. It looks like now they might officially mark it on the two, but nonetheless, inside the five. It's like the Madden Coffin Corner challenges back in the old video games. First and ten for the Fighting Bees. Tight look for them offensively with a tight end. 
Receiver in motion, there's the snap. Handoff up the middle and it's once again number 22, that is Ray Bouye the third. The senior back picks up a couple on first down. That'll bring up second now and about six yards to go. Good gain on first down to give themselves a little bit of breathing room. Same look offensively in the formation. Receiver motion once again. Another handoff to Bouye. And he's still up. But a lot of lateral movement overall. Gain of only about one from the senior back. That'll bring up third and a couple. It looks like it's officially closer to third and five, but third and four indicated on the board. Casey working in the gun once again. And he'll work a check with me, look to the sideline here. Clock still running as we tick under 13.45 to play in quarter number two. Bouye will trade sides of his quarterback under 10 on the play clock. There's the snap, Ward in motion. Bouye will take the handoff once again. He'll crawl forward, but it looks like he only gains a couple. Oh, and they will give him the first down. Odd vantage point from us here. And now a flag thrown. This might be on the Cougars' sideline, so hang with us here. We'll get the call officially from our referee in just a moment. 13-29 as the whistle blows. Here's the indication from our head official. So the officials not having any of it. Head coach Mike Feminis irate so far with this officiating crew. He's been in their ear all afternoon. No call on the Pringle getting hit out of bounds. Looked like Bouye might have crawled forward for the first down there. I believe that's what head coach Mike Feminist was arguing. And now they'll have plenty of yardage walked off against the Cougars. Plenty of breathing room now here for the Fighting Bees. First and 10. Brand new set of downs here from their own 27-yard line. Two receivers split out. Ward all the way down here on the near sideline. Right in motion, pass, Casey drops back, delivers a strike, that's over the head of his intended target, number 88, Ben Gilbert. So that'll bring up a second and 10 after the incompletion. First time we've seen the Bees try to take a strike downfield in quite some time after everything that they've been running offensively has been tight and around the line, a lot of handoffs. Working a dual threat so far with Bouye and Hall. Caden King, the starting running back listed on the roster for Ambrose. We have yet to see him today. Team's leading rusher. Here's Casey in the gun, trips to the far side. Casey drops back, delivers a strike to Bouye, and he is wrapped up immediately by number 22, Joey Markasovic. And in fact, that'll be a loss of yards on the play because of Markasovic's athleticism to get there as quickly as he did. That's a loss of two. And now third and long for the Fighting Bees after the check down backfires. Joey Markasovic, the heart and soul of the Cougars defense. And you saw it there on the pursuit. Closes with dangerous speed, almost like a lion hunting a gazelle in the savannah. Here come the Fighting Bees. There's a motion from right. Pass downfield over the head of Ben Gilbert. Incomplete, and that'll bring up fourth and 12. And we'll see the punting unit for the Fighting Bees. Good stand by the Cougars defense after the penalty. Justin Pringle is the lone returner now back for the Cougars with 12.34 to play in quarter number two. Still daydreaming of that Joey Markasovic play. Just incredible closing speed from the middle linebacker. Lead tackler for this Cougars team as well. There's the snap. Clean. And it gets away. A nice spiraling punt. Will die right in front of Justin Pringle. And it's downed 
by the SAU special teams unit. Decent punt overall for SAU. Doesn't get terribly far, however. Again, that wind playing a factor in this one. 12-26 as we have it on the game clock, and it's fresh set of downs here for the Cougs. Here comes Stuart Ross and company. Trips to the far side of the field. Mario Price in the backfield as the running back. There's the snap. Fake the handoff to Price. Ross drops back, slings it over the middle, and oh, Brant Hickson watches it go through his hands for an incompletion. Hickson open on the post route over the middle. Just unable to hold it in. Looked like it went right through the wickets. And he's unable to pick up the big gain. Instead, it'll be second and 10 now for the Cougars. Still plenty of time to go here and strong starting field position as well. The ball on the 44 yard line of the Cougars. Roughly right about midfield here is SXU. Two receivers to either side for Ross. There's the snap, Price takes the handoff. He's up the middle and he's got a little bit of space. Good tackle there, however, by number 13. That's lead tackler for these fighting B, Zach Alberts, the starting free safety. It'll be third and three now upcoming here for the Cougars. Good gain of seven for Mario Price on second down. And this is where things get interesting in the playbook. Looks like Price is hobbling a little bit as he comes to the sideline. Plunkett will take his spot in the Cougars huddle. Trips bunch look here to the near side of the field. Ball on the other side of the 50 at the 49. Ross, the handoff. Plunkett takes it and he is Absorbed in the backfield, going nowhere. Beautiful tackle there. And that'll be number 35. That is the freshman linebacker, Rolando Sepulveda. A nice play there, and that'll bring up fourth down. But has that mattered for this Cougars offense today? No, it has not. Fourth and four in the offensive unit still on the field. Ball spotted on the 50. Fourth and four to go. Empty backfield for Stuart Ross. There's the snap. Ross drops back. Delivers a strike to Hickson. And Hickson's got a first down. Makes another man miss. And he's tackled just before the 40-yard line. Big first down for Brant Hickson. Nice strike delivered by the junior, Stuart Ross. Cougars looking to find some momentum. They'll move quickly. Two receivers to either side. There's the snap. Hand off to Plunkett. And he's... Caught from behind, that's number five, the defensive end, Drew Ackman on the tackle. Officially no gain is the indication. Second and 10 now upcoming after that attempt, and there he is, ladies and gentlemen, that is number 23, Amari Venerable. First action he has seen today. Thousand yard rusher a year ago for this Cougars team, battled injuries all season long, and he is back, Quinn in motion. Ross is dropping back. He's got time, moving to his left. Eyes still downfield. He'll deliver a strike to the sideline. And Justin Pringle hauls it in. What a beautiful catch. Wow. What a beautiful play. Justin Pringle on the back pedal, able to haul it in right in the bread basket. Does a little tap dance on the sideline. And just like that, it's a fresh set of downs for the Cougars. What a beautiful throw. It is first and goal now for the Cougars on the seven yard line. Venerable in motion. Here's the screen to Pringle on the near side. He'll shed one tackle. Still leaning forward and he might have gained, we'll call it two. It'll still be second and goal upcoming here. Wow, what a catch by Justin Pringle to set the Cougars up inside the red zone. Perfectly placed ball from Stuart Ross moving to his left as well. That's exactly how you draw it up when you get into a scramble drill there for Stuart Ross. So officially no gain, still second and goal ball on the seven yard line. Cougars with two to either side. That's Hickson in motion. There's the snap. Ross delivers a strike. He was looking for Pringle, but it was just out of his reach on the slant route. So now third and goal and... All of a sudden, the Cougars have to really think about what they want to do here. 
They've certainly had plenty of success on the ground, and with Amari Venerable in the game, you would think you want to take advantage of your 1,000-yard rusher from a year ago. But nonetheless, it'll be three to the far side. Venerable to Ross's left. Third and goal to go from the seven. Pressure coming, it looks like, here from the Bees, and they bring it. Ross, fade to Pringle in the back of the end zone, but it's out of his reach. That'll bring up fourth and goal. Interesting decision coming. We saw Bennis already miss a field goal, but they're going to give him another chance here. Wind is at his back this time. So the Cougars looking for the chip shot points here for Peyton Bennis. 9.04 on the clock here with fourth and goal as Bennis gets set up. Samino the holder. Snap is good, hold is down, kick is up, kick is good. Cougars will add three points courtesy of Peyton Bennis. And with just a hair under nine minutes to play here in quarter number two, your Cougars jump back out in front by three, 10-7 in this MSFA Midwest showdown on this beautiful and rainy Saturday afternoon. Some incredible plays offensively so far for both sides. Most recently there, that Justin Pringle catch on the sideline. But this is the second drive in a row, mind you, that the Cougars got a big play from one of their playmakers, Mario Price earlier, Justin Pringle on that latest drive. And on two trips to the red zone, only coming away with three points. Certainly something the Cougars coaching staff will keep in the back of their mind as they enter halftime. That's an instance where you want to capitalize when you're backing your opponent's defense into their own red zone. This time, however, Bennis converts. So the field goal gives them the 10-7 lead for the moment. Here's Bennis set to kick off from the far hash. And a good kick at that. This will send Bielskis all the way back. It'll bounce into the end zone for a touchback. And that'll bring the respective offensive and defensive units onto the field for the Bees and Cougars, respectively. Still a good drive from the Cougars. They have definitely been able to take advantage of good starting field position. It's one thing worth noting. Anytime they've gotten it around that 50-yard line, overall have been able to march down and have a shot at the red zone. Two receivers to the near side here for the Fighting Bees. It looks like two on the far side as well. A tight look here. It looks like to knowledge Hall in the backfield with junior quarterback Tom Casey. First and ten. There's the snap. Yemi Ward on the end around. He'll cut up field. Falls forward and gains about, we'll call it, it's a gain of about, We'll call it seven, maybe six. It looks like six officially, so second and four upcoming. A nice play design there to get Yemi Ward involved coming around on the end around. They fake the handoff to the back. And a respectable gain on first down. Second and four, trips to the far side. There's the snap, handoff to Hall. Oh, and he's nearly brought down to the backfield. Instead, he escapes and runs over Phillips. And that will be plentiful for a fresh set of downs. Nice angry run there by number 24 to Knowledge Hall. And that'll be first and 10 for your Fighting Bees from the 34 yard line. Now three receivers to the near side with a stack look here on the outside. There's the snap, handoff to Hall. And he's gobbled up by the front four of the Cougars. A big mosh pit pile at the line of scrimmage. And officially forward progress indicates no gain. We'll bring up second and 10 here for SAU. Now the off pace back, number 22, Ray Bouye Jr., or the third part in me, checks in here on second and 10. Lone tight end in the game as well. Two receivers to the near side. 
One receiver on the very far side of the field. That's right in motion. There's the handoff to Bouye, and he doesn't go anywhere. Excellent defensive play from number 27. That's Finn Brandon. A beautiful job there from the junior and Dixon, Illinois native. Third and 11 now for this Fighting Bees team. Same look offensively in terms of personnel. That's a check with me on the sideline as we tick under 640 to play. Casey in the gun. There's the snap. Fakes the handoff, looking downfield. Deep pass, that'll beat everybody down the field. The Emmy Ward was the intended target, but about 10 yards too far was the pass from Casey. Had to get rid of it a little early. Had a little pressure coming from the backside there for the Cougars. And now on fourth and 11, it's a punt coming here for SAU. Jackson Hunsaker once again. We'll do the honors, 6.30 to play after the incompletion, clock stops. Pringle the lone returner now for the Cougars. There's the snap, bringing the pressure and Hunsinger gets off a nice kick, held up by the wind and Pringle will call the fair catch just inside the 35 yard line. Official spot will be the 33. Cougars defense once again coming through Defense overall has limited this SAU team. Just the touchdown strike to Ben Gilbert is all the Fighting Bees have to show for today in the scoring department. Amari Venerable remains in the game for the Cougars. 6-12 on the clock as they start this offensive drive. And that's Hickson in motion. There's the snap. Ross looks back the other way. Here's Venerable. He's got big hogs in front of him. To the 40, to the 35, to the 30, to the 25, and he's tackled Amari Venable. What a perfect play design for the Cougars. Fake it to the far side. You've shown that swing pass out of the backfield enough, trying to train the defense to key in on that, have Amari Venable slip out on the other side. Excellent execution there, and a pair of big hogs leading them down the field. Big gain on first down for the Cougars, and it's first and 10 now on the 23-yard line in SAU territory. Here's Hickson in motion. There's the give to Venerable from Ross. Or pardon me, that is Jesse Plunkett recently checking into the game. And it looks like officially a gain of two is the indication here, so second and eight after a short gain on first down. And now Mario Price checks in at running back. So the trio of running backs, really quartet of running backs today for the Cougars. Hickson in motion once again. They'll fake to Hickson. Ross looking downfield. He feels the pressure and moves to his left and this time just gets rid of it. Throws it out of play here to the near sideline. Good veteran move from Stuart Ross. Not trying to do too much with it. So officially third and nine, pardon us, there upcoming. So it was just a lone yard gained by Plunkett on first down. Here's Ross in the gun with two to either side. And now a yellow hanky and a false start is the indication against the Cougars. Self-inflicted wounds are the worst kind of wounds in football, ladies and gentlemen, and a false start penalty there is certainly not what the Cougars want with a third and long already on their list of tasks to complete. This will back them up. This will make it third and about 14 now here for the Cougars. And you've heard me say this before on a couple of these broadcasts this year. There's not a lot in the playbook, ladies and gentlemen, for anything beyond 10 yards. So third and 14 here will be interesting. Fake the handoff. Ross keeps it himself up the middle. Gains maybe a yard. And it looks like the Cougars will potentially opt for a field goal opportunity here. 444 and counting on the clock. It will be fourth and about 13. And they're going to go for it as Stuart Ross and company remain on the field. Three receivers to the far side. Pringle the lone receiver 
Price in the backfield. Ross with the snap. Here comes the rush. He'll deliver downfield a strike. And Quinn catches it. That's a touchdown, Cougars. On fourth and 13, Kyle Quinn makes the adjustment over the corner, holds in the catch from Stuart Ross. And just like that, it's 16 to 7, Cougars. What a beautiful play design for SXU. And it benefits on fourth and a mile. Cougars on the board once again with Bennis to look to make it a 10 point game. Excellent play there for Quinn. Again, made the adjustment. He was on the outside of his corner. Had to come back inside to haul in the catch. And does a nice job at that. Here's the snap. Bennis's kick is up and it is good. 17 to 7. The Cougars strike on 4th and 13. And just like that with 4.17 to play here in the opening half. The Cougars with a two-possession advantage over St. Ambrose. Going back to the touchdown play, as we were saying, Quinn making the adjustment mid-route to get inside of his defender. Anytime you have the inside leverage as a wide receiver, you have the upper hand, and he does a nice job there. Looked like it could have been inside the five regardless. Would have been a first down no matter what, but it didn't matter. Quinn does a nice job. Shaking off the defender and taking it in for his. Let's uh, let's check the records here. That's only his second touchdown of the season. Third overall if you count his passing touchdown from a couple weeks back. But a nice job there from slot receiver number one, Kyle Quinn. And your Cougars are on top, 17-7. to Bennis is getting ready to kick this one away. 4-17 officially on the clock to play in this opening half. Booming kick from Bennis. That'll... Roll into the end zone for a touchback. It was number 14, Jeremiah Crawford back as one of the returners that went over his head and into the end zone. So they'll spot the ball here now on the 25-yard line. First and 10 upcoming for... SAU and now your game plan changes just a hair here with 417 left they're spreading it out a little bit as well as you can see tight end in the game that is Nick Platner Yummy Ward the lone receiver here to the near side Casey in the gun there's the snap handoff to Bouye and he is swallowed up that is the freshman linebacker number 40 Terry Elias on the tackle for loss We'll get the official mark in here in just a minute. Waiting for the chain gang to set up. Looks like it'll be a loss of two. So that'll bring up second and 12 now. And now a whistle. And it looks like an official timeout. Looks like Elias's helmet popped off. So neither team charged with a timeout there. Officials... Ruling for player safety. Second and 12. Ball is on the 23-yard line. Casey dropping back, and he finds Yemi Ward open in the flat, and Ward able to pick up a nice gain after the catch. That'll bring up third and about two. Bouye, the running back here in the game. SAU works quickly. Clock continues to tick. We're at 3.15 and counting to play. Tight look in the formation for the Bees. There's the snap. Bouye takes the handoff, and he is swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. That will bring up fourth down, and the Fighting Bees will lose about two yards there. So this will be... Fourth and four, it appears. Maybe even fourth and five. What a nice play defensively for the Cougars. And as we tick under 240 to play, punt upcoming here from Jackson Hunsicker. Play 
Play clock dwindling down. They'll have to get this snap off, and they do. Hunsaker's wobbling kick is called for a fair catch. And instead he'll let it bounce out of play as it's tracked down by a swarm of bees. So solid starting field position for the Cougars. They'll get the ball on their own 33-yard line to begin this offensive possession. First and 10 with 2.18 to play. Now this is where things get interesting if you're SXU. The Fighting Bees get the ball after the half after the Cougars received the opening kickoff. So what do you do with 2.18 left on the clock? All three timeouts as well. Or at least so we believe, yes, as we check the scoreboard. They do have all three yet. Both teams with all three. Two receivers to either side. There's motion from Gray. Hand off to Price. He'll cut it upfield. And he's able to scurry forward for a very honest gain on first down. And now the Cougars will go quickly as the clock continues to tick, 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 tick. Second and five. Empty backfield. Here's Ross looking to his left. Delivers a strike to Hickson. And Hickson's gobbled up immediately by Sepulveda. And they will give him forward progress. That is enough for a first down, but the clock continues to click tick. It'll re reset as they set the chains, but that's about it. Cougars letting this clock dwindle down here. Remember, all three timeouts still in their possession. There's the snap, handoff to Price. He cuts it up and forward for a gain of about four on first down. So that'll bring up second and six now here. And there is a timeout finally taken here. I'm not sure we got an official word as to who took the timeout, assuming it is the Cougars. There it is. Now our head official able to speak. So the clock will be reset to a minute 35 officially. And they'll talk things over. So second and six, driving downfield, almost at midfield are the Cougars. Ball is placed on the 48-yard line. Time to start thinking about what the Cougars want to accomplish, I think, with this drive. Whether you go ahead and play for the field goal, again, wind at your back heading north right now, or do they try to score and see what happens? Cougars return quickly to the field now, second and six. Three receivers on the far side. It's Pringle all alone here on the near side. Ross in the gun and waiting for an indication from the sideline as Price flops sides. There's the snap. Price takes the handoff, coming to the near sideline. He'll just lower his shoulder and get out of bounds. Gains a single yard on second and six. That'll bring up third and a manageable five. And the Cougars continuing to move quickly, even though the clock stops. And it looks like it's third and four officially, so gain of about two. Ross looking over to the sideline. A minute 31 here on the game clock. Still plenty of time. Two timeouts as well, but you need to convert for a fresh set of downs. There's the snap. Ross looking to his left. He wants Pringle staring him down, and he connects with Justin Pringle at the 30-yard line, and Pringle is swallowed up by a group of bees. Excellent conversion on third down there. The Cougars continuing to move. Clock ticks, 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 ticks. Big pickup for Justin Pringle. Cougars are on the 30-yard line going in. Quick snap. Ross dropping back in the gun. He's looking to his left and right. Avoids the pressure rolling out to the right. To the near sideline, and he'll just throw it away. Good, smart play by Stuart Ross. A buck 9 to play on the clock. And the Cougars with feeling a little bit of momentum, it appears now offensively. So the incomplete pass stops the game clock. They can reset. It'll be a double slot look here for the Cougars. Two receivers to either side of the formation. That's Mario Price in the backfield with Stuart Ross. Quinn in motion. Ross nearly bobbles the snap, avoids a rusher. Now he's got to play backyard football. Rolling out 
And that one also out of play. It looks like number five, Mason Gray, was the intended target. This will bring up third and ten now. Ball on the 30-yard line here. And this is where you start to really think about things. Given how the Cougars have operated so far today, we've only seen the punting unit once. Would not be terribly surprised if this is four down territory for the Cougars, given where they are on the field. A minute 01 to play here in the opening half. Three to the near side for Ross. There's your snap. Ross looking left. Avoids the pressure, rolling to his left, and now delivers a strike toward the sideline. And again, out of play. Quinn, the intended receiver in the neighborhood. That'll bring up fourth and ten, and now an interesting scenario here for the Cougars. Could make the argument that there's endless possibilities given they scored on a fourth and 13 just their last time out. 54 seconds here on the game clock officially. Bryce on the left side of the formation. Three receivers to this near sideline as well, and now it's Little football exchange occurring as both teams have their own footballs on both sidelines. Happens on occasion. One team gets the other team's football. Nonetheless, officials have it covered. Fourth and 10 on the 30 yard line. Three receivers to the near side. It's Quinn, Pringle, and Hickson. Gray, the lone receiver on the far SAU sideline. Price in the backfield. There's the whistle. And they'll get the free play. Good job and execution. Ross throwing for the end zone. A touchdown. Touchdown, Cougars. Unbelievable play. Justin Pringle went up for it, got hit. The ball deflected up in the air. And Kyle Quinn came down with it in the end zone. It was a free play regardless. And there's the official word from our head referee. Offside defense. Penalties declined. Touchdown, Cougars. Wow, what a crazy play. Good to see Justin Pringle get up. He looks like he was shaken up a little bit after taking that contact. But just like that, it's 23-7 to on the free play. It's exactly what your coach to do on a free play, ladies and gentlemen. In that instance, go to the end zone. It's a prayer because it won't count if it goes against you anyway. 23-7 now. Bennis looking to make it a 24-7 game. The snap a little low, but Bennis' kick is up, and it is good. 24 to 7, the Cougars jump out in front. Talk about a two minute drill with 48 seconds still here on the game clock in this opening half. The Cougars have stretched out to a three possession lead as we begin to knock on the door of halftime. How about a crazy little play that was, huh? Kyle Quinn in the neighborhood. Again, it's just essentially a Hail Mary style play at that point with the offsides. And maybe for those at home that don't entirely understand, in college football, it's not like the NFL where a guy jumps and they immediately blow the whistle. Instead, you have to snap the football in order to get the penalty. In that instance, that's exactly what happened. Both defensive tackles came across the line of scrimmage. Olsen snapped the ball, and as a receiver, you are taught, just go. It's streaks. Just go for the end zone. Let's score a touchdown. If not, it's a free five yards. Pringle can't catch it. It flips up in the air. Bada bing, bada boom. And Quinn comes down with the acrobatic touchdown to make it 24-7. to Here's Peyton Bennis kicking off once again for the Cougars, and a beautiful kick at that. It's going to be handled by the freshman D.B. Crawford. He'll take it across the 20, looking to get to the 25, but he is swallowed up. Number 43, that is Ryan Fitzgerald, and number 33, Nico Urarte, both in on the tackle there for the Cougars special teams unit. With 40 seconds to play here, SAU does have all their timeouts. Let's keep that in mind, folks, because they would love to steal a possession hypothetically here. They do get the ball after the half, so they can work conservatively as well if things don't go in their favor. Three receivers to that far side on the near boundary. Yemi Ward, the lone receiver out here to our near sideline. There's the snap. Casey looking to his left. He'll deliver to Gilbert, and Gilbert will pick up a very nice gain on first down on the innocent screenplay. 
And now there's a yellow hanky down on the field at about the 29-yard line. We'll get the indication here from our head official. Holding offense is the call. That's a 10-yard walk-off from the spot of the foul, so that'll put that'll put the Fighting Bees officially back six yards from the original line of scrimmage. That'll bring up a new first and 16 from the 19-yard line. Where it appears a first and 15 indeed. Hate to see that happen if you're SAU in this situation. There's a handoff to Hall, and he's got green space in front of him. Phillips trying to tackle him up high. That hasn't worked for him too well, but able to get him around the waist and sling him down to the ground. And now the clock will stop. A timeout is taken here by SAU. We'll get an official word of what the game clock will be. Fifteen seconds will be left here in the half. And it looks like it'll officially be maybe second and ooh, seven. Hard to see here as there's a mob of large human beings in front of our down marker over there. We'll call it second and seven. And it looks like... The ball officially spotted on the 29, so this will be second and five. Chain gang was not fully set. Nice gain on first down there for Hall. Now Casey drops back. He's got to avoid pressure from the Cougars' rush. Delivers, and Phillips nearly picks it off. He's unable to hold on to it. The freshman cornerback, number 37, Jaden Phillips, nearly came away with an interception. That would have been his first of the season. Instead, it falls incomplete, and that'll bring up third down. Good read by the freshman corner as well on the far side. Not the greatest throw from Casey as... I'm not even entirely sure he saw Phillips. Big third down now upcoming here on third and five. Only 10 seconds to go here on the game clock. And the Cougars look like they'll bring pressure. There's the snap. Here comes the pressure. Hall. For all those still watching here on the broadcast, just updating everyone, it looks like we had a little bit of a minor power outage 
here at the stadium. All of our stadium lights went out. And that is why you're seeing a black screen right now. We're working to get the camera back up for you and ready for second half. So please bear with us. Just wanted to let you know a little technical difficulties here on the Cougar Sports Network.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We're about 90 seconds away from the start of a second half action here at Bruce R. Deaton Memorial Field. Just waiting for our camera feed to come back up, as we noted at the top of halftime. It had a minor power outage, it seemed, here at Bruce R. Deaton Memorial Field. We had the lights go out, and then our camera disconnected. You can see up on your screen there saying you're connected. That's all we're waiting for, folks, is just the stream to start back up. As soon as it does, we'll have you going. In the meantime, we'll do our best here to have a radio style call and let you know what's going on. But we should be up and running here at the start. Good first half for the Cougars if you're joining us late. 24 to seven, your current score. Stuart Ross, 13 for 23, 215 yards and three touchdowns in the first half. Mario Price paces all Cougars in rushing. 10 attempts for 139 yards in the first half. That was capped off by a 79 yard scamper that really got things going on the ground for the Cougars. Kyle Quinn is your leading receiver. Just two catches for 56 yards, but both of those being touchdowns. Mari Venerable has a lone 44-yard pass. That's the long on the day for the Cougars offensively. And Justin Pringle and Brent Hickson both with four catches for 39 and 59 yards respectively. So we're waiting on our camera to get back up and running here. Hopefully it will as the teams take the field now. As we indicated, we will give you a radio-style broadcast as best as we can while we wait for the camera to get back up and running. Apologies for the technical difficulties. Battling the elements today is what we're having to do in addition to having to take care of everything else as well. Bennis is set to kick off. And we're back underway, 15 minutes on the clock, third quarter action here. Bielskis will catch that at the 25, and he is brought down almost immediately by number 43. That is Ryan Fitzgerald on the nice special teams tackle. Only about a two or three yard return there for number 83 of the Fighting Bees. That is Nolan Bielskis. 14.55 on the clock here. It'll be first and 10 from the 29 yard line. Ball will be spotted on the right hash for the Fighting Bees. Three receiver look to the far side of the field near the SAU sideline. Lone receiver is Gilbert here to the SXU sideline. It's Casey in the gun with a running back. First and 10. There's the snap, the handoff to Tenalage Hall. He's going to meet the offensive line and front seven of the Cougars right at the line of scrimmage. Well, it's a mosh pit of humans, a gain of absolutely nothing, according to the FAR official. So it'll be second and no gain, or actually it'll be a gain of one, according to the chain gang. Second and nine after the to knowledge Hall rush. Ball is spotted on the 30-yard line. They're still on the right hash. Two receivers set, a pair of tight ends as well. There's the snap. Casey looking left over everybody's head, and that ball falls incomplete at about the Cougars' 45-yard line. Number 88, Ben Gilbert, your intended target. Ran the post route and just unfortunately misfired, did Casey. Jaden Phillips, Tyler Barnett, the two on the coverage for the Cougars. Third and nine now upcoming here, ball on the 30 yard line, still on that right hash. Cougars frantically getting substitutions on. Four receiver look now for SAU. It's number one, Yemi Ward on the SAU sideline is the lone receiver. Three receivers here to the near side with a stack look. Gilbert and Bielskis in the stack look as well. Casey in the gun, Hall to his left. Third and nine, there's the snap. Handoff to Hall, or a fake handoff to Hall and that'll slide through the hands of number 15, Justin Wright. And the incompletion there will bring up fourth and nine, and we'll see the punting unit come on for SAU. This will be Jackson Hunsaker. Seen him quite a bit today. This Cougars defense has done an excellent job standing tall. Fourteen oh six remaining on the clock here. It is fourth and nine as we indicated. Ball on the 30. Justin Pringle, the lone returner back for the Cougars at about the 20-yard line. 
There's the snap. Nice punt for Hunsicker. End over end kick. That'll check up at about the 20. Pringle picks it up on a bounce, and he'll step out of bounds at about the 23-yard line of the Cougars. So the Cougars will start their drive there with 13.55 to go here on the clock. It'll be first and 10, as we mentioned, from the 23. Great punt by Hunsicker to flip the field there for the Fighting Bees. As we mentioned earlier, apologies for our technical difficulties. Had a minor power outage during the half. Still working on getting the camera back up and running. As we mentioned, we'll try to give you a radio-style broadcast here in the meantime. 13.55 on the clock, ball in the left hash. Here's Ross, the snap to Price, and he is upended. And the ball is out. It's a fumble, and we'll get an indication it is... Fighting Bees football. Mario Price got upended by one of the Bees defenders. The ball spot, shot out of his arms and it rolled toward the SAU sideline and they were able to jump on it and get the recovery. 13-48 and the Bees are in business. Ball on the right hash on the 24-yard line now going in for SAU. What a turn of events. Tight look here, two receivers either side of the formation. There's the snap. It's an end around once again to Yemi Ward. He's got space and blockers in front of him. Across the 15 to the 10, and he's pushed out of bounds there by number three, Ron Carroll of the Cougars. Nice gain on first down for SAU. That'll move the chains. It'll be another first down for the Fighting Bees. Or at least it should be. It looks like they're respotting here. Oh, and we have a holding penalty against the Bees, so that'll take that back. Tough look for the Fighting Bees there. What a great play design. Again, we saw that play earlier in the game today from SAU as Yemi Ward came around on an end-around look. It was downfield, though, so the 10-yard walk-off brings the Fighting Bees back to the original line of scrimmage. The ball is spotted here. On the 25, it'll be first and 10. Casey with the snap and the gun. Looks to his left, delivers to right on a drag route across the formation. Right is pushed out of bounds by a couple of Cougars defenders. Phillips among the Cougars in on the stop. Good gain on first down as well. This will bring up second and just a few. It'll be second and four. So knowledge Hall in the backfield, tight look again for the Bees. Casey in the gun, there's the snap. Casey looking left, he's feeling the pressure, delivers again to right. That ball's up in the air and falls incomplete. Finn Brandon able to punch that out of Wright's hands and it was levitating in midair for just a moment, but no one came down with it as it falls harmlessly incomplete. Ball spotted on the 19 yard line here on the left hash. Going in are the Fighting Bees, they are in the red zone. Now they'll spread it out here on third and four. A personnel difference coming in as well. And now it looks like a timeout might be taken. I don't know what is. We'll get an indication here. And now we're set. Tight look, heavy formation, two receivers to the near side on third and four. There's the snap to Casey, handoff to Hall. He's gobbled up. Will he have enough for the first down? It looks like he's about a yard short. So this should be fourth and one now for the Fighting Bees. But a late flag comes in after the play. And it appears we'll have... A personal foul against the Cougars. Line judge and head official talking things over. Here's our referee with the official word. Half the distance to go automatic first down. Tyler Barnett, the guilty party of the late flag. So it is a fresh set of downs rather than fourth and one 
for the Fighting Bees. And it is first and goal from the eight. Tight formation look here. One tight end to the right side. Ball on the left hash. To knowledge hall to the left of Casey in the backfield. Three receivers in as well. 12.48 and counting on the clock. There's the snap. Casey rolling to his right, avoiding pressure. He's looking back across the formation, delivers a strike, and a nice defensive play in the end zone for number 26, Jacob Denny. The Cougars' corner swats the ball away from it. the intended target, number 15, Justin Wright. And with 12.40 on the clock here, we'll stop the clock. It'll be second and goal for the Fighting Bees. Casey having to improvise there, rolled out to his right, had a lot of ground to cover as well. He had Wright coming with him and ultimately delivered the strike to him in the end zone. But a good play by Denny defensively. Helps the Cougars survive without giving up any damage here. 12.40 on the clock, ball on the left hash on the eight-yard line. Fighting Bees going in, looking to score here. Another tight formation, three receivers. Pardon me, four receivers and a running back. There's the snap. Casey, end around to Ward. He's got Green in front of him. One man to beat to the end zone. Dives for the pylon. Touchdown. Touchdown, Fighting Bees. They'll punch it in on the end around play once again. Yemi Ward takes the end around and dives for the end zone with one defender to beat. It was Jaden Phillips, the freshman corner, the lone defender that could have stopped him from getting in. And instead, it's the Fighting Bees with the first score out of halftime. Place kicker Joe Namio will look to make it a 24-14 game. Extra point attempt here. Snap is good. Hold is down. Kick is up and kick is good. 24-14, your score with 12.32 on the clock. Able to punch it in are the Fighting Bees. And they've made it once again just a two-possession game here on a dreary Saturday afternoon at Bruce R. Deaton Memorial Field. Once again, for everybody at home, apologies for the technical difficulties. We had a minor power outage at the half thanks to the whipping winds in the Chicagoland area today. You'll see the orange connected screen. We're just waiting for that camera to get back up and operational. Once it does, hopefully we'll have the broadcast for you here. We're trying to bring you the best radio style broadcast we can in the meantime in this MSFA Midwest showdown. And the ball here falls off the tee for Namio. They'll have to have number 33. That's the starting safety. That is Drake, Jake Strader. He'll come over and hold it. Old school Charlie Brown style here for Namio to kick it away. As we indicated, 12.32 on the clock here in quarter number three. 24-14, now your score after the Yemi Ward rushing touchdown. Namio's kick is away. It's a squibber on the ground. This is going to be picked up. Eventually by Justin Pringle, it got through a number of Cougars, and now Pringle around the end to the 30-35, and he'll lower his shoulder and cross the 40 on the near sideline. The strong safety straighter took a big hit. He might still be down as well. We're waiting for someone to get up. It looks like there's a huddle around him here on the SXU sideline here, just in front of us, in front of the press box. Everybody's up and good now, so big hit delivered by number six, Justin Pringle on the return. Cougars with good starting field position. They'll have it here at their own 44-yard line. Nice return again by Justin Pringle, return of about 25 yards. Four receivers for the Cougars. Price in the backfield with Ross in the gun. Quinn in motion. There's the snap. Price gets the handoff. He runs to the outside here on the near sideline. Tries to duck around a defender. Able to do so and pick up respectable yardage on first down. That'll be a gain of about four, and this will bring up second and six now for the Cougars. Cougars just on the other side of midfield now. Ball will be spotted at the 47-yard line. Second and seven. Ball spotted just shy. 
So officially second and seven, pardon us. Gain of three that was for Price on first down. Cougars have three receivers to the far side. Empty backfield for Stuart Ross on the gun. There's the snap. Ross is looking left. Delivers a strike over to Brant Hickson. Hickson catches it at the sticks. He'll lean forward, and that is enough for a Cougars first down. Brant Hickson will pick that up. Innocent little curl route as Hickson sat in the coverage perfectly for Ross to deliver the strike. And just like that, it's first and 10 Cougars on the other side of midfield. Ball now spotted at the 43 of St. Ambrose. 11-20 and counting on the clock here in this third quarter. Cougars come out in a four-wide look. Two receivers to either side of the formation. It's Price to the right of Ross in the backfield. Gun look. There's Pringle in motion. They'll hand off to Price on the zone look, and Price cuts up field for a respectable gain of about three, maybe four yards on first and ten. Officially, we'll have a second and only gain of two, pardon, also second and eight after... The ball is re-spots. The ball now on the 41-yard line. Operating from the left hash are the Cougars, which from our vantage point here is the far side of the field. We'll go back to the two-receiver double slot look with Price and Ross in the gun. Second and eight. There's motion from Hickson. They'll fake the handoff. They'll look back to Price. It's a screen to the running back. He lowers his shoulder. He's tackled from behind by the defensive tackle, number 54, Jabril McNabb. But that is still enough for a fresh set of downs for the Cougs. On that play, they faked Hickson around on the swing pass in the formation. It's the same play we saw Armari Venerable pick up 44 yards on earlier. This time, however, it was Price. And although it didn't go for 44, it still picks up a fresh set of downs. Cougars now on the 32-yard line, first and 10 from the left hash. Empty backfield, three receivers to the far side for Stuart Ross. It's Price in motion. They'll give it out to Pringle on the far side on the screen. He'll turn up field, makes a couple of men miss, and is tackled right at the sticks. That'll be another first down Cougars. Now the ball this time will be spotted at about the 22-yard line. So the Cougars knocking on the door of the red zone. 9.28 and counting to play here in quarter number three. Cougars slowing it down a little bit in the huddle now, and the Cougars with a bit of momentum rocking out of this. Nothing special, just check down passes and runs, but they've been effective thus far. Double slot look, Price to the left of Ross on the left hash. There's the snap, handoff to Price. He'll cut it up the hash and won't gain much there. It appears it's a gain of about two for the freshman running back. Former wide receiver as well. Was a wide receiver at the beginning of camp, but due to a number of injuries in the backfield, they converted Price into the, ended up being the starting running back. Although we've seen a couple of those guys return in the form of Jesse Plunkett and now Amari Venerable. Still been the Mario Price show, as we mentioned, coming out of the half. He had 139 yards on just 10 carries so far today. Plunkett in the backfield. He's to the right of Ross. Double slot look from the left hash. There's the snap. They'll throw it out to Hickson in the flat on the far side. Hickson leans forward. An extra little boost looks like it might give him enough for a first down, but instead he's indicated out of bounds. It looks like a yard or two short of the sticks, and now we have an injured Cougar down on the field. It looks like it might be Hickson, and it is number eight, Brant Hickson. The SAU trainer runs over there. Cougars trainers running to that far sideline as well to check in with Hickson. It was a simple play. Hickson on a short out route to that far sideline and the, to the left of the formation. Caught it, turned up field, had a nice gain as well and then was shoved out of bounds, but it looked like he took some hard contact. He is up under his own power, helmet off, but coming back to the near sideline in a slight jog. Might have just had the wind knocked out of him. Good to see number eight, Brant Hickson, back to his feet. And the Cougars return to the field. Hickson will take a play off. It was a brief injury timeout for Hickson to be examined. As we noted, he is okay, though. 8.17 on the clock now. 
This looks like it'll be second and two for the Cougars, or it should be third. And it is, it is third down, third and two for the Cougars. And they got the big guys in there. Venerable in the Wildcat. He'll take the snap. The handoff to the big man, Fitzgerald. He's in for the touchdown. Touchdown, Cougars. It's the backup linebacker, number 43, Ryan Fitzgerald, on the touchdown scamper. The big man unit comes through, and with 8.04 to play, the Cougars have struck back 30-14. to 14. Cougars bring in the Wildcat look. It's kind of the heavy package that the Cougars have incorporated. Ryan Fitzgerald, among a couple other defensive players, get involved as lead blockers in the formation, and that's exactly what happened there. This time, though, it was a direct snap to Amari Venerable, who was serving as the quarterback, hands it off to Fitzgerald, and the backup linebacker rumbles, bumbles, and stumbles his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Peyton Bennis' extra point is up and good, and just like that, the Cougars strike back 31 to 14 after a beautiful start to the second half for the Fighting Bees. And just like that, a little bit of a special look gets the job done for SXU. 8.04 to play in this third quarter, as we noted at the top of the broadcast for the second half. Some technical difficulties thanks to a power outage. We're working to get that camera back up and operational for all of you at home. Just as we. Look to get things going. So the Cougars will be kicking off here right from the middle of the field. It will be Peyton Bennis to launch this into orbit from the 35-yard line with his left foot. Touchdown, Ryan Fitzgerald. What a play. He's had a day. Special teams tackles, now a rushing touchdown on offense. And now he's out there on the kickoff getting ready to run down. Bennis will send this up. It's a... High kick, but not terribly far. It's the freshman DB, Jeremiah Crawford, fielding. He's across the 35 to the 40, and he's eventually wrestled down by a pack of Cougars right at about the 40-yard line. And who else other than Ryan Fitzgerald, just after his touchdown, is involved there on the tackle. So now the Cougars' defense will look to force the Fighting Bees into a potential three and out, but with 7.56 to go here on the clock. And the ball on the 40-yard line. SAU wants another answer just like they did coming out of the half. Tight formation once again here for SAU. No receivers split out, all crowded near the rest of the formation. Tight end in there is number 45, Nick Platner. Three receivers, and it is the senior running back, Ray Bouye the third in the backfield. Here's Casey in the gun. There's the snap. Here's Ward again on an end-around look. He takes it to the near sideline, gets out of bounds after a gain of about three yards, maybe four if they're generous. And, in fact, now it is only a gain of two thanks to the update of our near official here on this SXU sideline. So we'll paint the picture for you. We're in the press box behind the SXU sideline. Ball on the near hash, the left hash that is. Two receivers to the far side toward SAU's sideline, one on the near side. Tight end on the line of scrimmage. It's Bouye in the backfield with Casey in the gun. There's the snap. Casey looking all the way left at Gilbert. Finds him on a simple curl route, and Gilbert turns up field to gain a couple. That'll bring up a third and manageable here. This is third and about two coming now for the Cougars. 7.06 and counting to go here in this third quarter. SAU trying to gain some momentum after the Ryan Fitzgerald touchdown scamper. Under seven minutes to play now. Ball on the left hash again. Tight look coming with four receivers and a back for SAU. It's Casey in the gun. Third and two. There's the snap. Pressure coming. Casey steps up in the pocket. He goes down. Ball is out. Who has it? It's on the ground. It might be SXU football. And we have a ruling, it is. Cougars force the fumble on third down. Casey coughs it up after feeling the pressure. Nearly sacked, it's a strip sack for the Cougars defensively. It looked like Peyton Campbell and Jaleel Holloway were both in on the sack. So it's 6.39 to play. It's Cougars football in SAU territory. First and 10 from the 48 yard line. Good pursuit from the Cougars front four. They brought no extra pressure, it was all 
Peyton Campbell, Holloway, Anderson, and Williams up front. They got there with the pressure. Trips look to the near side. Cougars operating from the right hash. Justin Pringle, the lone receiver on the left side of the formation. Amari Venerable joins Stuart Ross in the backfield. There's the snap. There's the pass to Gray, and it'll fall incomplete. Gray doesn't look it in on the screen pass. Incomplete on first and 10. That brings up second and 10 now for the Cougars. As we mentioned, neither team really pushing the ball downfield too much today. Incredible wins here in the Chicagoland area all day long. Had some nasty rain earlier as well. So with 6.36 on the clock, Cougars will get back to work second and 10. Two receivers to either side of the formation. It's Ross and Venerable in the backfield. Here's Gray on a swing motion, and they'll hand it off now. Pardon me, that's Jesse Plunkett, and he's got space. Scampers forward, he'll cross the 40 and 35, and he will pick up a fresh set of downs. Gain of about 12 yards for the Evergreen Park product. And just like that, the Cougars are back in business. First and 10 from the 36. 6.18 and counting to go here. 27 and counting on the play clock. Cougars will slow things down now as they huddle up. It's a rare sight for the Cougars offense, but when they want to manage the clock, this is exactly how they do it. It's Plunkett still in the backfield now for the Cougars. Two receivers to either side. Ball on the right hash. Ross in the gun. Gray in swing motion yet again from the right side, and they'll give it to Plunkett up the gut. And Jesse Plunkett gains about two yards on the first down carry. That'll bring up second and eight approximately now from the 34-yard line. And once again, they'll slow it down. 5.35 and counting to go here in this third quarter. Still plenty of football to play in this second half. Cougars with a strong 31-14 lead right now over this SAU team. It is a cold and chilly day here now after the rain moved through. Started as a decent day temperature-wise. Here are the Cougars. Ross in the gun. They gives it to Quinn on the near sideline. Quinn makes a move, gets out of bounds, and he is shoved out there by Strader, number 33 for SAU. With 5.07, the clock will stop. Quinn is just shy of the first down. Now the clock begins to run again. It'll be third and short upcoming here, and officially it looks like it's a third and one. Third and one, maybe third and two coming here for the Cougars. Ball will be spotted on the 28 yard line. It will be third and about two. Two receivers to either side. It's Plunkett in the backfield, Ross in the gun. Quinn in the swing motion from the right side. There's the snap, Ross. Throws it behind his intended receiver, Mason Gray, who ran the slant route and didn't see a football because it was about five yards behind him. 4.35 on the clock. That'll bring up fourth down Cougars. And given what the personnel on the field looks like here, it looks like they'll go for it on fourth and two. Here comes the big man package again. Fitzgerald and Holloway join. Backup lineman Jordan Loving as well out there, and Amari Venerable will be in the Wildcat. Ross split out to the right side. Pringle out there as well. Pringle in motion. Venerable takes it. Hands off to Pringle. Pringle on the jet sweep, and he'll pick up enough for the first down gain of about four yards for Justin Pringle on the sweep toward the SAU sideline. Just like that, that's all it took. 420 and counting on the clock in this third quarter. Cougars will once again slow things down as venerable Holloway and company trot off the field. That big man package been effective so far for the Cougars today. Obviously the Fitzgerald touchdown coming out of that package and now a big fourth down conversion. Two receivers to either side. Ball now on the far left hash. It's Plunkett in the backfield to the right of Ross. There's the snap. Hand off to Plunkett. He'll follow his pulling tackle. Leans forward for a gain of a couple. That might be a gain of three. That'll bring up a second and seven now for the Cougars. 342 and counting to go here. And now a yellow hanky comes out well after the play. We'll get the indication here in a moment. Looks like it could be against the Cougars. Certainly an instance of shooting themselves in the foot. We'll get the word from the official referee now.
So the Cougars get tacked for it. It sounded like it might have been one of the offensive linemen. We didn't get a clear indication of who it was on. The wind is making the official's microphone about as useful as a wet rag on a cold day. 337, it's second and seven, or well now it'll be second and a mile, pardon me. We'll call it second and a mile. We don't know exactly what it is. Sounds like second and 22 is the indication, thanks to fellow radio broadcast here in the booth with us. So the 15-yard walk-off, detrimental here to the Cougars. And it also indicates a loss of down because it was after the play. Had official having to take his notes in his little notepad. So the ball is spotted now on the 37-yard line of St. Ambrose. Left hash. Cougars still going in. As we noted, it is third and about a mile as the sun starts to creep through here at Bruce R. Deaton Memorial Field. Trips to the far side. Here's Hickson in a jet motion. They'll get it out to Pringle on the far side on the screen. He is nearly wrapped up, breaks out of a tackle, and is able to pick up about eight, maybe nine or ten yards, but that will still not be nearly enough to convert. So we'll see fourth and um, we'll do the math here really quick. It'll be about 12th. And actually, they'll maybe not as favorable as original position indicated. This is instead still about a fourth and 16. And the Cougs will go for it because why not? 2.51 and counting to go here. Three receivers to the near side. They're on the far left hash. Justin Pringle, the lone receiver to the SAU sideline. It's Plunkett in the backfield. He'll switch sides. He's now on the right and back to the left of Ross in the gun. Fourth down, there's the snap. Ross looking to his left, feels the pressure coming, and he is dropped for a sack. Max Gorley as well as Ackman in the vicinity. And as Ross is dropped, that will result in a turnover on downs for the Cougars. So it'll be first and 10 from their own 39. SAU will start on their right hash. Two receivers to our near side. It's Wright and Gilbert. One receiver to the far side. That looks like Yemi Ward. Tight end to the right side of the formation. And it's Bouye in the backfield with the junior quarterback, Casey. There's the snap. It's low. It's on the ground. Casey picks it up. Has a host of Cougars in his face, and he will now go down. That'll be a sack. And that'll be a loss of about maybe eight yards. Low snap from the starting center, number 69, Willie Lopez. And it actually looks like it's number 62 today, Namaya Miller starting at center. So a sophomore getting the start. Low snap, rolls back, and Casey just has to send a prayer and pick it up. It'll be second and about 17 after that loss. Same formation, just the tight end now to the left side. Casey in the gun, there's the snap, fakes the handoff, drops back, looking right. Deep pass downfield, and that will beat everybody down the field. Barnett and Denny in on the coverage. It was number one, Yemi Ward, the intended target. 1.41 to go here in this third quarter. Ball spotted on the 32-yard line of SAU. Still on the right hash. It'll be third and a mile. After the incompletion from Casey to Ward. Similar personnel now. It'll be Wright and Ward on a stack. Look on the far side. Gilbert, the lone receiver over here. Tight end to the right of the formation. There's the snap. Fake handoff from Casey. And he's dropped. Big sack for the Cougars. Justin Yeasel getting the sack. Coming around off the near side edge and the clock continues to tick it's a minute 20 left to go and counting and just like that it is fourth and a mile the punting unit for the bees coming out number eight this is jackson hunsicker once again he'll look to boot this one away with pringle the lone return man play clock down to six they'll have to get this one off quickly otherwise it will be a delay of game and they do Hunsicker's kick, end over end, sails. It'll hit Pringle right around the 30-yard line, and he'll 
go lateral to the 35. There's flags everywhere, 45-50, 45-40, 35-30, and Pringle will just step out of bounds. This will be coming back. Three yellow hankies back between the 30 and 35-yard line of the Cougars. It'll probably be a block in the back. This will back up the Cougars. Looks like that'll be from the spot of the foul, which was the 35-yard line. We'll get the official word here from our head referee in just a hot second. And now the officials talking things over again. You heard the buzz of the microphone from our head referee. Not sure if the officials wanted to have a hanky throwing contest. Here's the word. So block on the back. They said two fouls on the play, both on the Cougars. One's block in the back. Personal foul. Blindside block. And that one is declined according to the official. So that backs the Cougars up. So they will start with the ball on the 25-yard line. They'll get it right in the middle of the field. So it'll be first and 10 Cougars. Ball on their own 25. 41 seconds to go here in this third quarter. 31-14, your score. Cougars operating three receivers to the SAU sideline. Left of the formation. Mason Gray, the lone receiver here to the right side. It will be Jesse Plunkett when the ball is spotted. As the running back. And he will be to Stuart Ross's right. And look at Stuart Ross being a good guy, helping the referee get something taken care of. There's the whistle, and here comes the play. There's the snap. Ross hands off to Plunkett. Plunkett takes it across the 35 to the 40, and he's finally tripped up just shy of the 45 yard line. What a beautiful run! Jesse Plunkett, another outside zone play, moving to the left of the formation. And Plunkett goes just short of 20 yards. It looks like a 19-yard pickup and a first down. Clock continues to tick. We'll tick under 20 seconds here in a hot second. And they will take this, it appears, to the beginning of the fourth quarter. Stick with us through this radio-style broadcast. Who knew a power outage thanks to the win would uh, mess up our feed here? But as we tick under 10 seconds... One more quarter to play. Cougars out front, 31-14. We'll step aside for a brief breather. Don't go anywhere. We'll be with you here for fourth quarter action on the Cougars Sports Network. Welcome back. Fourth quarter action right here on the Cougars Sports Network. We apologize for the lack of film today. Cougars moving quickly. Plunkett gets another handoff. And he'll get a nice gain. That'll be a gain of 10 right out the gate to start this fourth quarter. Cougars moving quickly. We apologize for the technical difficulties here on the broadcast. We had a minor power outage at the start of halftime. All of our stadium lights went out and it disconnected our camera they've been working to get it up and running hopefully we'll have something for you before the end of this one doing our best to bring you a radio style broadcast here i'm ron loose on the call with you 14 26 and counting here as the cougars have another first down first and 10 here at the start of the fourth quarter they'll move quickly three receivers to the near side ross takes the snap hands it off to plunkett once again plunkett buries forward and he'll pick up about three yards on the first down scamper. Jesse Plunkett having himself a really nice day. Plunkett, the sophomore running back, has gotten a lot of action in this one so far. He's also now up to 40 yards through the 
end of that third quarter. Mario Price still leading the charge with 147 yards on the ground. Two receivers to either side of the formation. Cougars right in the middle of the field. Ball on the 43-yard line going in SAU territory. It is second and about seven to go. There's the snap and a handoff. That is taken forward by the fifth different running back today for the Cougars. That is Dominic D'Ambrosio listed as a quarterback on the roster. And fun fact about Dominic D'Ambrosio, the grandson of coaching legend here at SXU, Coach D. Getting some tick here late in this MSFA Midwest matchup. Still D'Ambrosio in the backfield. Four receivers to either side, ball on the left hash. Third and five from the 41-yard line. Ross takes the snap. He'll throw it out to Pringle here on the near sideline. Pringle makes one move, cuts up field, doesn't get much. Generously, he'll get about a yard, maybe two on the play, and that will bring up fourth and about four now for the Cougars. One of those quick screens to the sideline once again. Plunkett returns to the action as D'Ambrosio heads back to the sideline. They'll slow things down and operate out of a huddle now will the Cougars. Pringle will be the lone receiver to the near side of the field on the Cougars' sideline. Or no, pardon me, he is actually out of the game now. And it looks like it might be a timeout that's going to be called here. A lot of personnel confusion. And now the coaches are communicating with the line judge here, trying to get a full understanding of what is going on. Everybody just as confused as we are. Don't worry, folks. We'll get you an update as soon as we know. So it looks like everything is set now. Cougars with two receivers to either side of the formation. On the left hash, it's Plunkett to the left of Ross. Fourth and four from the 40. Plunkett motions out of the backfield. Now Ross down to the near side on the screen, and that will go absolutely nowhere. That was number 84, Cameron Hatcher, the freshman receiver on the reception, unable to do anything with it. And just like that, it's a turnover on downs for the Cougars. It'll be SAU ball on their own 41-yard line with 11.45 to play here in quarter number four. In case you haven't caught the entire game with us through all the scoring today, Cougars' first touchdown came via Stuart Ross's pass to Justin Pringle. That was a five-yard screen pass for the touchdown. SAU responded with a nice 24-yard strike from Casey to Gilbert. We'll get back to the scoring summary here in just a minute. SAU lined up three receivers to the far side. They're operating from their right hash. Yemi Ward, the lone receiver to the near sideline. One running back with Casey in the backfield. There's the snap handoff, fake handoff to Hall. And now the intended pass for right falls incomplete. That will bring up second down and 10. Officials ruling it a forward pass. But as we noted, Peyton Bennis then gave the Cougars the lead with a field goal attempt. Made it 10 to 7. Stuart Ross then on 4th and 13, a 26-yard touchdown pass to Kyle Quinn. Broke the game open, and then Kyle Quinn on a deflected pass to Justin Pringle caught another touchdown. Only At that time, his only two catches of the day. Here's a deep pass for Ward. It's hung up in the air, and that'll absolutely be pass interference. And there's the yellow hanky. Two of them come in. Yummy Ward. Had to come back for that ball. Again, we mentioned the wind playing a factor today, and it definitely did there. That ball got killed as soon as it in the up in the air, and now Amy Ward is hobbling off on one leg to the sideline. <coughs> and he's down on the far sideline now, able to get off under his own power, but he looks to be in quite a bit of pain. Hopefully he's okay. So it is a pass interference call, as we noted. We noted the Yummy Ward rushing touchdown made the game two possessions and then the latest touchdown coming via the backup linebacker Ryan Fitzgerald fumbling, bumbling, and stumbling his way into the end zone. And that's where we are, 31-14 with SAU driving. 
Ball is on the Cougars' side of midfield. The ball officially spotted at the 44-yard line. Right hash, tight formation here with a tight end for SAU. Here's Casey in the gun on first and 10. There's the snap. Hall takes the handoff, moves to the left, doesn't get much. That's number four, Peyton Nigro. He's halting the progress of Hall, and it looks like it's a gain of absolutely nothing. So this will be second and 10 for SAU. Just a simple handoff. Hall worked his way toward the left hash, unable to get there before Nigro took him down. Now they'll spread it out. Two receivers to the near side, a tight end H back in the backfield. Fake the handoff, does Casey. He feels the pressure. He'll avoid it and run out to his right. Continuing to scamper, and Finn Brandon will shove him out of bounds. It will be officially no gain. So that'll bring up third and ten. Good coverage downfield and good pressure from the Cougars as well to force Casey to just take it himself and run out of bounds. 10.45 on the clock and counting here in the fourth quarter. Four receivers wide. Yemi Ward back. Good to see him in the game again. He's on the near sideline. Right hash is where the SAUBs stand. Right Gilbert and Bielskis to the far side. Hall in the backfield with Casey. There's the snap. He fakes it to Hall. Bielskis, the intended receiver, or pardon me, that's right, and he'll get it. He rumbles forward for a gain of about seven, maybe eight, but that will bring up fourth down. And they have to think this is fourth down territory now for these SAU fighting Bs. And a near line change for the Cougars defensively. And they'll go quickly. Here come the SAU fighting Bs on the left hash. Three receivers to the near side, four all together out wide. A lone running back in the game as well. 9.47 and counting. Hall to the right of Casey. There's the snap. Hand off to Hall. Hall will take it forward, and he'll pick up enough. He'll be tackled right at about the sticks, but that will be good for a Fighting Bees first down. The chains will reset. First and 10 SAU as they continue to march. That'll bring up a first down. Ball is spotted on the 34-yard line of the Cougars. Same formation, three receivers to the near side for SAU. It's Casey in the gun. 9.22 and counting to play in quarter number four. Casey examining the defense, and now he'll take the snap. There it is. Fakes the handoff and drops back. Just a dump off for Hall, but that'll fall incomplete off the hands of the big junior tailback. And the clock will stop with 9-10 to play here in quarter number four. Second and 10 now upcoming for SAU, who's getting into a little bit of a groove now in this offensive possession. Still have a lot of ground to make up after the Cougars blew it open, making it a three-possession game here. Sun's starting to peek through. Still plenty of wind at Bruce R. Deaton Memorial Field. There's the snap. Casey drops back. Feels the pressure, steps up in the pocket, delivers a wobbling throw intended for Hall, who slid out of the backfield as a check down option. Ball falls incomplete. Casey took a big hit there. It looks like Jabari Anderson might have gotten in there for the Cougars. That'll bring up third and 10 now for SAU on the Cougars' 34 yard line. Now, now five to play. Three receivers to the far side now for SAU. Yemi Ward, the lone receiver here. Right in the middle of the field are the Fighting Bees. There's the snap. Casey out to right on the far sideline on the swing. He's got enough and not enough, though, for the first down, it appears. It looks like it'll be about two yards shy. And they'll have to go for it here. So fourth and two, it appears, upcoming. And they'll go for it. Similar formation now just from the left hash. A little bit of a hard count from Casey. They'll do a check with me on the sideline. Casey examining the defense. He doesn't like what he sees. It checks back with the sideline. It looks like they'll run it anyway. There's the snap. Casey 
to the near side. Wobbling pass for Yemi Ward falls incomplete, and it's a turnover on downs. SAU turns the ball back over to the Cougars, and they'll take possession on the 26-yard line. And with 8-11 on the clock and a three-possession lead, you have to imagine the Cougars are going to do their best to operate in the four-minute offense, run the ball, keep the clock moving, take as much time off the play clock as humanly possible between plays as well. Three receivers to the near side, ball on the far right hash. Gray, the lone receiver on the far side. There's the snap, handoff to Plunkett on the zone run to the left. He'll cut up field and gains about four yards on the first down carry. Clock continues to run here at Bruce R. Deaton Memorial Field. Second and six now upcoming, and the Cougars slowing things down. Well, the Cougars have one more home game, ladies and gentlemen, and it'll be next Saturday right here at Bruce R. Deaton Memorial Field. The Cougars welcome local rival University of St. Francis from Joliet, and that looking like it will be for the MSFA Midwest title. That one will be a noon start. Join myself and Redrick Terry, who's coming back to join me on the broadcast for that one. It'll be a good time. I look forward to seeing you next week for that. Here come the Cougars operating out of the gun. Ross slings it out to the outside for Quinn. He'll cut up field, and he's got the first down. Innocent out route from Kyle Quinn to the far sideline. Catches it in stride and turns up field. And that's exactly what the Cougars were looking for there on second and six. Fresh set of downs for your Cougars. 7-13 and counting to go here in quarter number four. The ball will be spotted on the 37-yard line. 7.05 and counting. As we noted, Cougars slowing things down. Hickson and Pringle will be split out to the near side of the field. The ball is spotted on the right hash. As we mentioned at the 37-yard line. Gray, the lone receiver on the far side. Quinn joins Hickson and Pringle to our near sideline. D'Ambrosio once again in at running back. He'll take the handoff from Ross and might get back to the line of scrimmage. That might be generous as it appears no gain on first and 10. So second and 10 upcoming now for the Cougars and they did exactly what they wanted with that play just to continue to chew clock. 6.26 and counting to go here in quarter four. As we mentioned earlier, the sun finally starting to peek through after a dreary day here in the Chicagoland area. Cougars up 31-14 here late in the fourth quarter. Jesse Plunkett returns as the tailback for the Cougars. Two receivers to either side from the right hash. Ross in the gun. There's the snap. Ross looks to his right, delivers to Quinn again. Quinn will turn up field, not get much. Maybe a gain of about two yards. There is a yellow hanky down on the far sideline. We'll get the word here from our head official. Didn't get a number there, but holding on the offense. So with 5.56, that stops the clock. This will be a second and very, very long. Waiting for the chain gang to get set. And it is, in fact, about second and 19 now for the Cougars. Ball spotted on the 28-yard line. Ross with a lone tailback, three receivers to the near side. Ball on the right hash. Joined by Plunkett in the backfield. There's the handoff to Plunkett, rolling left. He gets it up and across the 30-yard line. So a gain of about three there on second and long. That'll bring up a third in a mile now here for the Cougars. 5.15 and counting to go here in this half as the ball begins to roll away from the official. That's how crazy the winds are here today. Cougars in a bit of a huddle now as we'll tick under five minutes to play before this ball is snapped. Three receivers to the far side. Ball just off to the right of the left hash. Empty backfield, Ross takes it quickly, gets it to Pringle, Pringle turns up field, breaks a couple of tackles, and is eventually slingshotted out of bounds. Only gains about three yards, the Cougars sideline looking for a flag, they won't get one. That'll stop the clock for the moment with 4.48 to play here in quarter number four. So 
So it will be about a fourth and 13 now, and rather than risk it, the punting unit will come out here for the Cougars. They do have the wind at their back now as they're kicking north. It'll be Nolan Bielskis back to return as the lone returner for SAU. SAU in their all-white jerseys today, the Stormtrooper look, as you might call it. Cougars in their red and gray this afternoon. There's the snap. Here's the punt. It's the freshman Fletcher, end-over-end kick. And that gets a nice bounce. That's going to roll all the way inside the 10, inside the 5. And that will be down at about the one-yard line. And they get him on the one. Freshman wide receiver Cameron Fletcher does the punting duties. And with 4.03 to play, the ball is on the one-yard line for SAU in their own territory. Talk about coffin corner kicks today. We saw Justin Pringle back up. The bees inside their own five. And now they're going to spot it this time at the one. So 4.03 to play, and SAU backed up in their own end zone. You better believe the Cougars got two points on their mind. Everybody on the starting defense still out there for the Cougars. And it's a tight look here from the Bees offensively. Tight end H back in the backfield to the right side of the formation. There's the snap. Casey with the handoff to Bouye. And he's stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. He might have gained about a yard according to the officials. So that'll get him out to the two-yard line. Still a second and nine. And they'll operate quickly as this clock ticks under 342 and counting to play. Same formation. Here come the Bees. There's the snap. And it will be a free play, but now the whistle blows it dead. Typically, that means an offensive penalty. Otherwise, it would have been a free play. So we'll get officially what it is here, but not sure why they blew the whistle. That should have been a free play for the Bees. If they're indicating it's offsides defense, but somebody got a little go happy. Ah, okay, there it is. That's the explanation with contact. So if the defensive player touches an offensive lineman, they will blow the play dead rather than him just jumping on the other side of the line. So it's a walk off of five yards, second and four now for the Bees. And now the play is blown dead before it can start. Head official talking with junior quarterback Tom Casey, giving him an explanation probably of why he blew the whistle. 3.34 on the clock here, 31-14 your score. So it looks like they didn't officially spot it. That's why the play was blown dead. Still second and four. Same formation look here from the Bees. A tight look. Tight end to the right side of the formation. A couple of receivers to the far side. Casey takes the snap. Hands it off to Bouye. Bouye shifty through the line. He'll gain about a yard. So this will still be third and a few. Third and three, the official word ball is spotted on the eight-yard line. Maybe the nine-yard line. Nonetheless, third and short, same formation for the Bees, trying to get the Cougars with the hard count again. They will not. So they'll check with the sideline as we tick under 250 to play in quarter number four. Three-possession game. Cougars looking to pick up win number eight of the season. There's the snap. Hand off to Bouye once again. Bouye is eaten alive by the Cougars' defense. Ron Carroll and Peyton Nigro meet him in the backfield. That will bring up fourth down now for the Fighting Bees after a loss of two. Fourth and five. And naturally, oh, and they'll actually bring the punt unit out, it appears. So 2.15 and counting. The clock continues to go, and it will be number eight, Jackson Hunsicker. Pretty much backed up on the very back of his end zone to kick it away. We'll tick under two minutes to play now before the snap here. Ten seconds left on the play clock. There's the snap. Hunsicker plenty of time, and he'll get away a good kick. No one back to return for the Cougars, so this will just 
fall. And it looks like they'll spot it at about the 39-yard line. That was where it was first touched by SAU, despite rolling a few yards further away from the punting unit. So with 1.43 to play, the Cougars take over here, and you have to imagine the game plan is just to let it go. SAU kind of almost waving the white flag of sorts by punting there on fourth and a couple. So with 1.43 to play, it'll be interesting to see if head coach Mike Feminist allows his team to run any plays. Backup quarterback John O'Sullivan now in the game for the Cougars with a minute 43 to go. A couple of reserve receivers joining him as well. They'll get set. Reserve offensive lineman in the game now as well for the Cougars. There's the snap. D'Ambrosio takes the handoff. Ball is on the ground. So this will be right back to the Bees. Yeah, and that's a clear recovery. D'Ambrosio unable to hang on to it. And with a minute 36, SAU will be back on offense. So as we noted, next week's game for the Cougars will be a noon start against University of St. Francis, Illinois. Coming up from Joliet to Bruce Ardeet Memorial Field. It will be senior day as well. Be sure to tune in for that one as myself and Redrick Terry take the call for you. Three receivers out to the near side. Here comes the snap. Casey delivers a strike to right over the middle. He's swallowed up after a gain of about five yards. It's... Finn Brandon as well as one of the reserves there for the Cougars. That was number 16, Nate Curtis on the tackle. Here's to Knowledge Hall taking the handoff. He'll gain about three yards, it appears. This will be third and just a couple now for SAU. Official marking looks like it's third and one. And they'll go quickly, same formation. Casey in the gun, 54 and counting to play. Hall with the handoff, and he is dragged down. That is number 54. We called his name a little bit earlier, Justin Yeasel, the freshman D lineman. Had a sack earlier in the game, and now we're under 40 seconds to play in this one. It is fourth and three for the Fighting Bees. Three receivers to the near side for Tom Casey and company. There's the snap, handoff to Hall. Oh, a fake handoff to Hall, pardon me. And now that ball will fall incomplete. The wind took that as it was going for Yemi Ward. So 20 seconds remain in the game, and it's the Cougars taking over after the turnover on downs. And as head coach Mike Feminist always says, his favorite play in football is the victory formation. And that's what we'll expect to see here with 20 seconds on the clock. Cougars will just look to call it a day. It looks like it will be number nine, John O'Sullivan under center. And they are in the victory formation. Everybody just getting officially set. Both teams getting their personnel on the field. There's the snap. O'Sullivan takes the knee and that will do it. The Cougars win 31 to 14 in this penultimate home game of the season. Be back with us next week as myself and Redrick Terry call Senior Day against USF Illinois. And that'll be a battle for the MSFA Midwest title right here at Bruce R. Deaton Memorial Field. I'm Ron Luce, and until next week, we wish you well. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Cougars take this one over the St. Ambrose Bees 31 to 14. We'll be back for Senior Day next week, and the Cougars. Look to wrap up the conference title. Have a good one. Take care from all of us here at the Cougars Sports Network.